Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have Father Michael Zimmerman. We'll see a video from Shivias and much more. Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have Father Michael Zimmerman, and he's the Assistant Director of Vocations with the Archdiocese of Boston. And he's developed a movie series called Shivias, which is a discernment guide to help men discern the priesthood. And now we're gonna watch the intro video to Shivias, Know the Ways of the Lord. When did St. Peter receive his vocation? On the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he heard Jesus' voice speak to him. Come and see, come and follow me. But that wasn't when he received his specific vocation, because Jesus called many to be his disciples and to follow him. It's something we're all called to do, to follow Jesus. The church calls this the universal call or vocation to holiness. It's something we all share in. St. Peter's specific vocation, that came later. In the middle of the gospel, Jesus asked the apostles, who do the crowds say that I am? They say, some say John the Baptist or Elijah or one of the prophets. But then Jesus asks, who do you say that I am? St. Peter, he speaks on behalf of the apostles and he says, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. And it's in that moment when he identifies who Jesus is, that he is the Lord. That's when St. Peter discovers his own vocation, because in that moment, Jesus says to St. Peter, and you are Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. The gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against the church. And so it's finally when St. Peter comes to know who Jesus is and to trust him and to confess him, he comes to discover his own vocation, who God has called him to be, to be Peter, the rock of the church. In this series, we'll help you get to know your vocation, who you are made to be, by most of all, getting to know Jesus and trusting him. Father Michael, welcome to Life on the Rock. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. This is your first time on Life on the Rock. And That's you're right. A fairly new ordained priest. Uh, you were ordained back in 2017, um, working on a number of video projects that we'll get into. But can you tell us a little bit about your own story and your own sermon? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I really began discerning a call to the priesthood when I was in college. Mm -hmm. uh, so there were some inklings earlier on, yeah. but I was avoiding them pretty actively. Uh, but when I was in college at Boston University, there was a community of religious brothers and getting to know them. They were good, normal guys, but seeing their life of prayer, mm -hmm. the work that they did, their community, I began to think, this is a good life. Yeah. You know, I could see this for myself. Um, now, my girlfriend at the time <laughs> was not too keen on that yeah. idea. We've been dating yeah. about two years. Okay. So seeing how upset she was, I ran away from it. Yeah. Um, but then the next year, my sophomore year of college, the thought came back. So I began meeting with one of the brothers, uh, and he provided some, some help and discernment. And I began to see that I felt the most peace in times mm -hmm. of prayer and joy in times of service, especially 
uh, in the church. And I also felt God calling me to give myself to him uh, in such a way that I wouldn't be able to give myself to a wife in a way she would deserve. Yeah. Just being one person and not being able to give myself totally to both. Um, so um, we ended up mutually breaking up. You know, we were growing apart. We were becoming different people anyway. But yeah. actually, at that point, we'd been dating four years. I was 20 years old. Hardest decision of my life was to end that relationship, but received a lot of peace and consolation uh, in that. So in a way, I discerned a call to celibacy mm -hmm. first, to give myself totally to God. And then the priesthood, uh, that came a little bit later. A little bit later. Now about the community that you encountered in college, what was it? Was there anything in particular that maybe you learned or encountered? Yeah, so one was that they were joyful. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, they were just like, um, they were inspiring. You know, they were definitely... Um, you know, in, in the church, sometimes you don't always see like younger men or a men's community, yeah. like really pursuing, pursuing virtue and greatness and uh, to see, to, to get to know them and to them to like invite me and to be a part of that mm -hmm. uh, was just really inspiring for me. And like, I experienced that joy, I experienced yeah. of that community yeah. and was like, I want that. Yeah. And I also think too, um, just in the world today, especially with Colleges, you know, there, there's a lot of secularism there. Um, you know, religion isn't on a high priority <laughs> in a lot of people's mind. Uh, and just to kind of discern, you know, a, a calling to the priesthood in that environment can be kind of a, a challenging thing, but also it kind of reinforces the faith because you have to learn to grow in a lot of new areas. Were there any kind of new areas that you had to learn to grow in? In pursuing a vocation yeah. of the priesthood? Yeah. Um, you know, I think the biggest area I had to learn to grow in was trusting God. Yeah. Uh, like being able to put my life in his hands and mm -hmm. say like, all right, I trust you, God, where are you going to lead me? Uh, and I would say that's kind of really a fundamental thing when it comes to discernment of one's vocation. Saying, yeah. you know, I've got my plan, I've got my way, um, but do I trust God with my life? Yeah. One passage from scripture I often reflect on that helps that where we see this is um, when Jesus is asking his apostles, uh, who do the crowd say that I am? Uh, and they respond, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. Elijah, John the Baptist, one of the prophets. And then Jesus asks, well, who do you say that I am? And Peter speaks up on behalf of the group and says, you are the Christ. You know, you are the son of the living God. And it's in that moment where Peter comes to know who Jesus is and to confess him as the Christ and the Messiah that's when he hears Jesus say to him, and you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that moment where finally Peter confesses Christ, you know, trusts him as, you know, Savior and Lord, that he discovers who he is called to yeah. be. Yeah, I think there is that realiz realization whenever we do kind of realize who Jesus is in our life. It is transforming because mm -hmm. you can grow up, you know, hearing a lot of things, but are we really listening with our heart? You know, I think that's a, you know, just, uh, you have to make faith very intentional. Yeah. And I think, you know, a lot of times, you know, too, I think maturity kind of comes into yeah. into play, but how to listen to the mm -hmm. Lord. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I think a lot of times I hear from people who, they, they want to discern, you know, they want to know God's will for their life. And so they'll pray that. They'll say, God, whatever you want, I want to do. Um, but it remains very like general and abstract. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they almost like stick their head in the sands. Yeah. <laughs> and we're afraid of asking the questions of, or even paying attention to what's in our own hearts. Yeah. Um, like, okay, I say I wanna do the Lord's will, uh, but I'm afraid, yeah. you know? And I'm, and I'm afraid to even bring those areas before the Lord. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I wanna have children, I wanna be married, I want mm -hmm. um, a career, I want whatever, but actually getting specific yeah. and looking at those particular areas and bringing those before the Lord. Yeah. And I think too, with trusting in the Lord, like you were mentioned, a lot of times there's a lot of fear. And something I've kind of noticed is that there's a lot of people that can be kind of stuck in the state of perpetual discernment. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to, you know, it's like they feel called to almost everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How do you kind of just kind of narrow things down to where the Lord actually is calling you and uh sometimes i think we can just kind of bounce around uh almost aimlessly yeah but you know really the good lord is calling us to a sp you know a specific place you know absolutely uh, i think any kind of vocation and discernment that's 
it's kind of a very specific calling. So. Yeah, I think some some things that can be helpful in that is like learning that there is like a hierarchy to things, mm -hmm. you know, and, and even within my own heart, there's there's desires I have, yeah, and they might seem to me conflicting, uh, mutually exclusive, but ultimately in God's plan, like everything does come together. Um, and so learning how to like get to the depths of what is it I truly desire mm -hmm. and what is the greatest of goods that God is calling yeah. me to can help me learn to like prioritize those things yeah. and bring them together. It requires too, I think a lot of self-knowledge. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I think too, it's just, sometimes you go to a place, it's like, ah, oh, this isn't gonna work out. You just kind of immediately <laughs> yeah. go yeah. and you move on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The, um, a priest friend of mine, he had, you know, just a great, really concise way of saying this um, is that oftentimes we imagine that certainty leads to action. Mm -hmm. You know, once I know, then I'm going to go. Mm. Um, but in reality, it's action leads to certainty. Mm. Um, it's only once I go can I know with certainty that this is what God is calling me to. Oh, that's a good distinction there. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, we got to go to a break, but whenever we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about your, uh, your movie project with Skivio knowing the way of the Lord, and you're going to talk a little bit more about the sermon. So. Father Michael, you've been working on a video project for a little bit of time now. It kind of sprung up during COVID, but it's mm -hmm. the Latin pronunciation is a little bit unique. Uh, Skivias. Skivias or Shivias, uh, either one works. Mm -hmm. Which means knowing the way of the Lord. Yep. So you're talking a lot about discernment. Um, but can you actually talk about what started, what got you started working with Skivias? Yeah, absolutely. So this video project really began early on. Mm -hmm. I've only been in the vocations office almost two years. And from the beginning, I recognized uh, a lot of people don't know how to discern yeah. God's will. Yeah. And there are resources, there are books out there, there are testimonies and witnesses one can hear, but not so much like an accompaniment, mm -hmm. like a guide to walk with somebody through that process of yeah. discernment and providing them uh, good counsel along the way. Yeah. So I recognized that very early on. And when everything locked down because of the pandemic, I suddenly had the opportunity yeah. uh, to put pen to paper and wrote the episodes in about two to three weeks. Wow. Um, so there's 27 episodes, um, but they're only five minutes in length. So they're very yeah. accessible um, and manageable. Um, but in that, I, I try to provide helpful guidance and, mm -hmm. and recommendations on how to go about discernment. And I provide examples for my own life yeah. uh, to show how this is put into practice and how I experience this. We add up all those videos. That's about two and a half hours. <laughs> it's a fair amount. Content, yeah. So. It was a lot of work, but, um, you know, we've heard from a lot of people already. They really appreciate yeah. it, whether those are men discerning the priesthood mm -hmm. or actually even married people say, you know, this is helping me live out my vocation yeah. and pursuing God's will more fully. There's actually a lot of discernments in the church. Mm -hmm. you know, to the priesthood, to mm -hmm. the religious life, to the married life, yep. to living singly. And those can be, you know, while you're, you know, young, you know, you have to discern those things. And uh, so I'm always kind of, you know, what draws, you know, somebody to a certain direction. And, you know, one of my patrons say in St. Therese, like she knew at a very young age, three, mm -hmm. you know, just about she mm -hmm. had that calling to become a nun. And uh, I don't know that that's normal <laughs> for yeah. everybody, but... Uh, I think, you know, God works, you know, worth who we are in calling us to uh, different states in life. But I wanted to know, what are some of the, maybe the um, principles or steps you see towards discernment? Yeah, I think for discernment, it really begins with a desire. Yeah. Um, a desire to know God's will, like what's my place and purpose in life. I think that's really the inspiration for all prayer. And prayer leads us to a relationship with God. And that's how we end up discovering who we are. Mm -hmm. um, you may have heard the acronym RIM, R-I-M, mm -hmm. which stands for Relationship, Identity, Mission. Mm. And so this desire to know leads to a relationship with the Lord. And from that relationship, we discover our identity and what we're called to do. Yeah. We see this in the life of Christ in that even, you know, he is the son of the father. 
Um, that's his the relationship. That's who he is. And from that, he's sent from the Father's side. Yeah. So even before he begins his public ministry, uh, we see at his baptism, God the Father saying, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. So coming to know who we are in relationship to God leads us to discover what we're made for. Yeah. And I think, he, too, there's a, uh, something to point out. Just We do have to have a, a relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. you know. And actually, I mean, the Lord can call us in many ways. It's all throughout the gospel, you know, the way the, you know, Jesus called, like, St. Matthew, mm -hmm. you know. It's um, who knows where really God was in his life before mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But, you know, he recognized the voice of the Lord. And, you know, we respond in the, you know, faith is a response to that voice. You know, yeah. that is calling us into a very intimate relationship. And so I always think Eucharistic adoration mm. is very important. You know, and a lot of this, you know, we kind of grow up Catholic, but we don't know much of that practice. And I always mm. think that's to get into the practice of going before the Lord in Eucharistic adoration. Is very important. Yeah, I would 100% agree with yeah. that. I would say all of my breakthroughs in discovering my vocation came during times of Eucharistic yeah. adoration. Yeah. So I can't, can't recommend that enough, yeah. absolutely. And I also have to say the other one is the sacrament of penance, of mm -hmm. going to confession. Mm -hmm. And uh, because, you know, you look at where you are in your relationship with God, you know, and these are the laws of God, you know, the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. You just kind of see where you're at, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not... You know, God doesn't shame us, you know, but yeah. he invites us, you know, to in turn to, I think, a, just a deeper communion with yeah. himself. And if I can piggyback on that, another one I would say is a good Marian devotion. Yes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> she's awesome, our Blessed Mother. Um, you know, she teaches us to say yes to God's will, yeah. as she said so perfectly, let it be done unto me according to thy word. And also, I think, especially for men, a lot of times we have difficulty understanding, like, what's going on within our own heart. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, relationship with our mother and talking with her can help us become more aware of that, who yeah. was always pondering what was in her heart and seeing how that um, relates to her relationship yeah. with her son. And you've been a priest now about four years, mm -hmm. and you've been working in the ministry, and um, now you also do some teaching. Yep. Uh, you teach scripture? Scripture, yeah. That's, uh, that's kind of one of your specialties. And, uh, but I also kind of wondered, what's, what's it been like for you to be a priest? Yeah, you know, being a priest has been amazing mm -hmm. <laughs> by, uh, by God's grace. One of the things, right after I was ordained, within the first month of being ordained, uh, I pretty much felt like I did everything that a priest does in one month, yeah. you know, in terms of all the sacraments. Um, one time, uh, there was a man dying in the hospital, mm. desired to be baptized, mm. you know, and, and brought him baptism confirmation, Eucharist, you know, anointing of the sick. It was like a sacramental wow. grand slam right yeah, off the bat. Yeah. And everyone in this room was struck by this. Yeah. You know, his nurse desired, desired to get confirmed after that. Wow. His girlfriend wanted to be baptized after that. His roommate had fallen away from the church for 30 years and now wanted to go to confession. Wow. Um, so when the sacraments are present, you know, God's grace just opens up from heaven, just hits everyone nearby. Yeah. And so moments like that, or moments like hearing a confession from someone who hasn't been in 50 years, 60 years, and I'm like, I haven't even been alive that long. Right, yeah. <laughs> but in God's providence, he's brought us here together. And so I would say just recognizing um, there's so many moments as a priest where it's like, if I was ordained just for this one moment, it would all be worth it. Yeah. And those moments happen all the time. Yeah. I think, too, the importance about the priests is that they, pre they bring Christ into our life, mm -hmm. you know, through the sacraments and I think through their witness, you know, and a lot of them do make a lot of sacrifices behind the scenes <laughs> that a lot of times we don't see. And, um, but I wanted to also ask you, where can we learn more about discernments and your uh, movie projects? Yeah, so uh, I'm in the vocations office for the Archdiocese of Boston. Mm -hmm. So our website is vocationsboston.org. Okay. And then also on our Facebook page and YouTube channel, uh, we have this Shivyas video series and hopefully other projects upcoming oh, as good. well. So, Vocations Boston. Oh, well, good. Well, Father Michael, thank you for being on Life on the Rock. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Well, Father John Paul, Father Michael, he had a lot of good things to say about discernment. But a theme I think that really stuck out was trusting in the Lord. And that's something that we have to cultivate really in the church is learning how to 
just trust in the Lord and listen to his inspirations. On the introductory video and also uh, in his interview, he was quoting from the Lord's dialogue with uh, Peter, mm -hmm. with Simon Peter. And, you know, he had, Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? Yeah. And some say, some, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say one of the ancient prophets. Yeah. But Jesus' question to him was, who do you say that I am? Yeah. And, you know, that was really specific in my own life, too. Mm -hmm. um, in my own prayer life and vocational call is recognizing who Jesus yeah. is. And, yeah. you know, Father talked about, you know, in the introductory video, it talked a lot about the, inter the universal call to holiness. Yeah. You know, that's the first and f primary call. Mm -hmm. Once we figure that out, once yeah. we figure out that we called the holiness first, then our particular vocation will become a little bit more clear. Yeah. And I think, too, knowing who Jesus is in our life in the life of the church is so important, you know. I think a lot of men and women as they, you know, go into college, there's a lot of distortions out there about who Jesus is. Some believe he's just a man or didn't exist or some kind of pagan thing. But no, Jesus is God. He is God in the flesh. He's God the Son, God and the eternal word. the church word. makes that very clear <laughs> to yep. us in our belief and in our faith. And I think with St. Peter, you know, there is that recognition that this is Almighty God here before me you know, asking, who do you say that I am? So. And with Peter, for us to say back to the Lord, you are the Christ, mm -hmm. you are the Messiah, the Son of the living yeah. God. So again, we have to be holy. So we have to listen to the Lord, learn how to open our hearts, you know, spend time in Eucharistic, prayer, in Eucharistic adoration, sure. and going to the sacrament of penance, you know, which is often neglected today. And you know, and you're a a missionary of mercy and you you know you're always proclaiming that and that's a good thing so because we need people to go back to the sacrament of penance so. well definitely and and having a solid prayer life mm -hmm. and i i found that in going to the sacrament of confession opening your heart up to what the lord yeah. wants to receive give you in the, in the sacrament yeah. and you receive that changes everything yeah. it's a game changer and i think whenever we restore that relationship we're able to really listen to God with more clarity. So we're able to hear him exactly mm. with less obstacles. Right. So Father John Paul, can you give us a blessing? I'll give a blessing with the relic of St. Maximilian Kolbe that we've been entrusted with through the intercession of St. Maximilian Kolbe, this great priest. May the Lord help all those of you who are discerning your vocation and to follow it in the way in the footsteps of this great saint, the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next time on Life on the Rock. God bless you.